Chapter 8 After tossing rather perfunctory greetings to the few straggling fan clubbers, I tucked Louis under my arm and into my car. Louis lived within blocks of Sawyer's and so did not drive. He had two roommates, which precluded our trysting at his place. I drove in relative silence, with only scattered late-night traffic sounds to dent the quiet. My car's AM radio had not worked in years. I had sang, I'd like to get to know you, yes I would, softly to myself, and held Louis's soft, warm hand between gear shiftings. Snooky sat strangely quiet in the back seat. Upon reaching Snooky's apartment, we discovered Snooks out cold, sprawled in an uncomfortable-looking position across the car seat. Louis reacted as if we had found a newly murdered corpse in the trunk. The blonde boy was wide-eyed, and, to my mind, somewhat overly concerned with the state of Snooky's health. I attempted with limited success to explain that Snooky, in fact, passed out of my back seat on a semi-regular basis. This was hardly a condition read. I lifted Snooky's firearms I lifted Snooky firearm style and carried him into his apartment and into his bed. Are you sure he's all right? Louis asked. His brow pleaded with concern. My dear, I replied, Snooks is absolutely in the pink compared to how he's going to feel in the morning. After removing Snooky's scuffed black loafers, damned if I was going to wrestle the clothes off him, I left him to his slumbers, snoring as an inhuman, at an inhuman decibel level, and drove Louis up to my place. Louis was as sweet a night's sex as I'd ever enjoyed. While Billy Holiday filled my small one-bedroom apartment with smoky blues from the stereo, we kissed. Louis's mouth tasted sweet as apricots, and his agile little tongue played delightful games of tag your it with mine, and made undulating waves in my queen-size waterbed. Louis was built small and solid, but with a soft layer of baby fat that I found endearing. It gave him a voluptuous, slightly overripe sort of look, like a suntan cupid. His all-over caramel color was broken by a startling milk-white streak at the crotch. The boy's butt seemed nearly phosphorescent against the deep tan. The sight of my hands against that snowy posterior delighted me no end. Louis was hung smaller than me, which pleased me, I'm afraid, but seemed perpetually tumescent. After coming twice in my mouth, rapid fire, blam, blam, one after the other, it was the summer of 79 after all, we all swallowed it in those days, he showed no signs of waning. I envied Louis this unflagging teenage potency which I, 22 and dead tired after a full day's work and three sets at Sawyer's, could only look back upon with nostalgia. Louis licked and sucked me with the sloppy enthusiasm of a kid with a fudgesicle, with a fudgesicle, <laughs> murmuring softly between slurps, while I recited the Pledge of Allegiance over and over to myself, lest Louis's attentions bring me over the edge too quickly. Then, seconds before I would have popped my cork, he released me. Do you want to, he asked, turning up his pale, perfect bottom to me. I wanted to. I was as careful as my advanced state of excitement would allow. Louis moaned a soft continuo as I moved inside him, caressing his smooth sides and kneading his soft little rump. The wild animal sounds Louis made as he shot yet again onto my recently laundered linens pushed me over the edge, and I clutched the boy hard against me, crying out loud enough to incite my next-door neighbor to pound a testy tattoo upon our shared wall. Later, Louis and I lay close again against one another, despite the warmth of the night. Louis's head rested on my chest. I stroked him as far as I could reach. You're really wonderful, he said, his breath ruffling the sparse hair between my pecs. On stage and off, he added. I grazed his beardless cheek with my fingertips. You're pretty wonderful yourself, son. We lay quiet. I fell asleep beginning to we lay quiet. I felt sleep beginning to cover me like an animated blanket, starting at my toes and creeping slowly up to my ankles. You know what? Louis whispered. What? You're the first black man I've ever been with. I felt myself tense as an old insecurity mon I felt myself tense as the old insecurity monsters came galloping across me like the four horsemen of the neuroses. It bugged me that Louis had said that had made a point, however small, of my blackness, and I wasn't sure why. Maybe I was suddenly afraid Louis was slumming or experimenting, or that maybe this was National Take a Negro to Bed Week, or that maybe, just maybe, my being black was, for whatever reason, as important to Louis as his being blonde and adorable was to me. I nearly said something mean and stupid, like, so what do you, wanna, so what do you want, a certificate of merit from the NAACP? But I didn't. What I finally did say was, is that a fact? 
Well, it so happens that you're the first bus boy I've ever been with. Louis giggled, then kissed me on the ear, tickling me, making me giggle too. I could feel him, amazingly, hardening again, hot against my thigh. What more could a guy ask for? He was soft and warm, seemingly insatiable, and he'd stay the night.